So we are live on YouTube. So a very good evening to all our respected faculty members and a warm welcome to all the delegates who are the part of today's Core Connect live webinar. Myself, Bhumit Patel from Corona Remedies. As you many of you know, Corona is among top five INEC companies in India and being responsible organization. We always provide a platform for different scientific sessions like CMEs and webinars. So this time we have coming up with a new and another part of the digital course. So AMOG's Oncology Committee cordially welcomes you all on digital course on Colposcopy part two. Coordinator for today's uh, webinar is none another than uh, Dr. Anagha Ma'am. So let me take a moment to introduce Dr. Anga Diwan. She is practicing OBS and gynecologist. She is a colposcopist and preventive oncologist at Diwan Hospital's Mukta Colposcopy Center, Aurangabad. She is first WHO IARC IFCPC fellow in Marathawada region. She is ISCCP certified colposcopist. She is coordinator in AMOG's oncology committee. She is faculty in AMOG's 2022 colposcopy workshop at Ahmedabad. She is a faculty member in digital course on colposcopy by AMOG's oncology committee. Moreover, she has been also involved in so many social activities like delivering multiple talks on cervical cancer awareness and vaccination, regularly conducting cervical cancer screening and camps. So without making further delay, I would like to hand over uh, this session to Dr. Anga ma'am. Ma'am, please. Yeah. Thank you for kind introduction. A very good evening to respected seniors and dear colleagues. I extend our warm, heartfelt welcome to all dignitaries on behalf of AMOG's Oncology Committee. Today, there is second part of webinar, Digital Course on Colposcopy. It's our great honor to have legendaries like Dr. Rushikesh Pai, sir, President Foxy as chief guest, Dr. Rajendra Singh Pardesi, sir, President AMOG's, Dr. Sujata Dharvi, Madam, Secretary AMOX, Dr. Razika Zoshi, Madam, Senior Colposcopist, Dr. Mandakini Meg, Madam, National President AMWI. Uh, now I request Dr. Ajabra Vasu, sir, to take this session ahead. Uh, please uh, show me uh, Vasu, sir's uh, biodata slide. Uh, Vasu sir is practicing gynecologist at Chikli since 22 years. Uh, he is chairperson of AMOG's Oncology Committee. He is WHO IARC certified master trainer. He has done more than 6,000 colposcopies till date. And as I know him, he is very simple, down to earth and noble hearted person. I request him to take the session ahead. Over to you Vasu sir. Good evening everyone and a warm welcome to all of you at this digital course on colposcopy part 2 management of cervical precancer lesions. Our chief guest is Dr. Rishikesh Pai sir, President Fakji. 
he cannot join today because of his busy schedule i say thank you for him accepting as a chief guest tv बैकग्राउंड वगैरह कहीं टाकूँ या ता ऐसे दे ऐसे ऐसे दे सॉरी जी म्यूटेड वासु सर इज म्यूटेड भूमित आओ लेकर इट इज माय प्लेजर टू हैव अवर गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर डॉक्टर परदेशी सर एमॉक्स प्रेसिडेंट हु ग्रेसिसली एक्सेप्टेड to be with us this evening sir is a true inspiration for many and we are honored to have him grace us with his experience <laughs> pardeshi sir has presented 27 papers in it's okay it's okay also it's okay we are lagging behind schedule good evening everybody kindly bless us with your precious mm. words please mm. sir yes respected dr sujata dalvi our secretary amongs dr mandakini meg madam dr radhika joshi dr ajab rao vasu dr bharti abhankar our ever active state coordinator of amongs and friends first i wish to congratulate dr ajab vasu dr sandeep phadke and dr ananga devan for organizing such a academic and practical webinar on prevention of cervical cancer that is digital course colposcopy 2 they are very regular in uh, organizing such a program every month they are organizing a program on preventive oncology at this time they are involved dr nikhil parvate also with the galaxy of speakers like dr arunpama bhute dr bharti abhankar dr nikhil parvate and chair person i think this is going to be a great program the great program listening to dr bharti abhankar dr radhika joshi and dr nikhil parvate is really an academic feast dr nikhil parvate is a really renowned and he will explain all the operative also in a lucid manner i wish every success to dr bharti abhankar for our future endeavor in amox as vice president election i wish every success to dr mandakini meg madam for Thank our you. future endeavor in foxy we need leaders like dr mandakini meg madam thank you wishing wishing every success to this webinar thank you thank you so much for inviting me thank you thank you sir thank you sir. Mm. thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much it is my great pleasure to have our guest of honor dr sujata dalvi madam secretary amox who have graciously accepted our invitation to join us for this webinar madam is a consultant of statistician and gynecologist mumbai global saiki bhatia st elizabeth hospital honoris clinical associate nauroji wadia maternity hospital librarian mumbai of statistician gynecological society secretary amox joint associate editor of jogi please madam guide us some next is uh, i welcome our guest of honor dr radhika joshi madam senior colposcopist who has generously accepted our invitation today we are eager to hear his insights and experience please madam राधिका मैम आवी ऑडिबल डॉक्टर राधिका मैम यस 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 यस
but we are not able to see you madam yeah now now we are able to see please share your Thank experience you please share your experience oh thank you very much basu uh, actually i am in the teaching of uh, cervical cytology and colposcopy you know for last uh, more than 15 years and so many people come here take some knowledge they go back but there are some persons like vasu who really start working on it even when he came for training with me he was well prepared and he came with particular questions which he could get them cleared way and he went back and started his work very few people do this and now he has become the chairman of oncology committee so i really congratulate him for that and uh, i know he is <laughs> this is going to be a great success thank you madam due to your support i am here today thank you i deem it a great privilege to welcome dr mandakini madam for this webinar we are immensely delighted that you are here madam is a chair person icog foxi 2020 21 president association of medical women in india international vice president mwia central india national vice president foxi 2013 past president of indian federation of ultrasound in medicine and biology past dean of indian college of medical ultrasound vasu ata pure gala okay thank you madam guide us with two words yeah. this was so i think uh... a uh, great great um, congratulations to dr basu and uh, dr anagha and dr um, all three conveners of this program first of all like like to give you the information that the hospital where i was heading the khamgaon women hospital yes. where dr, dr basu was a medical officer in later years and coming from the rural uh, a semi rural I, i will not say it was rural it had a beautiful hospital 150 bedded now converted into 300 bedded hospital and coming from that place you know taking the training and take not only taking the training giving the services to the women in that area basu uh, it's a great great thing because i have myself been given the services in that area when there was no surgeon around and uh, there were cases day in and day out i think you must have heard many cases which i dealt there rupture uterus rupture ectopic inversion without any blood bank that time there was no blood bank so i think i feel very very proud of you and now not only you are giving services you are taking the training and that is i think that is the uh, cherry on the cake because a person of your caliber who is really vast experience as our dr radhika joshi has said he came you went with the training and you taken the training forward by two ways one by uh, providing the services i know how much khamgao and chikli and malkapur and that area my husband was collector there, there and i know the inside of the district so it becomes more uh, i think i feel very close to you when you you know talk about the Uh, Buldana and other areas, and Aurangabad is adjacent area. So I feel very proud of you. Second thing, the subject which you have chosen, uh, this colposcopy. I think in our time there was not a single pep smear. Doctor Basu, if you remember, Doctor Ingari was my medical officer, and he was telling me the other day when he felicitated me, Madam, you were the first to give me the case of abruptio placenti, a new me- new medical person to operate upon. because i was tired of doing so many cesarean section day in and day out so such is the clinical load there including aurangabad and the referral uh, to the khamgao and to buldana so uh, with this i think you are will be uh, doing a great job of training the people even from that area and as dr radhika joshi has said you will take it forward in providing the services and also training your colleagues so that they can have a inspiration from you and start in that area 
it is not meant only for mumbai or you know metro police because in mumbai we are there we, now we are there me uh, as a mwa president running a cytology clinic in kama hospital and with dr usha saraya we have done hundreds of training programs since last 45 years and there are many product of ours uh, bharti abhyankar is there dr radhika joshi is our colleague uh, she is a member of our mwa uh, mumbai branch anupama and i must tell something about anupama i have delivered anupama in local cesarean section her mother so whenever i look at anupama i said you are my product because nobody can believe that i can do uh, cesarean section in local and she is there uh, you know such a successful lady in her all innovative things so i think basu with these words with these words dr pardesi thank you very much for your uh, all the wishes we people are from the rural area we people are from the area where there are no facilities no anesthesia no surgeon even i remember when there was case of intussusception there was no surgeon so i only did the end to end anesthesis of the intestine patient went very well so what have been those condition we are operating so and you are dr pardesh you are an example that you are from uh, from our side you are there to take care and we feel so close to you not in the urban area but because you are there we all maharashtra people please very close to you so i feel sometimes very emotional because i belong to that place i belong to the rural area and i belong to this and now i have come so far in the foxy like uh, i have won the election of uh, foxy imaging science chairperson dr pardesi was there to pull support second election was foxy vice president third election was the vidarbha was the first person to have icug chairperson from our rural areas and now with all the grace of everybody and you know wishes everybody in support i wish to become the president of foxy so i think that will be great great thing if you all support me and i should feel one of you and take all the people ahead in the foxy in the mainstream with these words again heartiest congratulations keep on doing good work keep on calling us and we feel very close to such kind of program thank you very much डिलाइटफुल एंड मेमोरेबल डॉक्टर फड़के Dr. Farke has done MB, MBBS, MD at Government Medical College, Nagpur. Awarded. Yes, sir. We will start. He is a gold medalist in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Dr. Vasu sir, for giving me the opportunity to coordinate this uh, digital colposcopy workshop part two. WHO in 1967 declared. cancer cervix as a preventable disease and imagine in just over period of next 50 years we have come from control of the disease to the elimination of the cervical cancer by 2030 now it is the responsibility of the gynecologist to do the early detection and the treatment of cervical free cancerous lesion because the females they expect and they have very high faith in their gynecologist amox oncology committee along with foxy is committed for the who call of elimination of cervical cancer and also it is committed for updating the skills of our fellow gynecologists for the early detection and the treatment of cervical precancerous lesion digital colposcopy course part 1 was basically focused on the early detection of cervical precancer lesions now in today's digital colposcopy course part 2 we are going to have basic focus on the management of cervical precancerous lesion without wasting much time we'll start with the first session which is on the management of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia by cryotherapy by none other than dr anupama bhute for that i would like to invite chairperson dr kalpana gulwade 
ಅಂಡ್ ಚಾಕೋ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಾಗೃತಿ ಮುರ್ಕೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಹಲೋ ಎಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕಲ್ಪನಾ ಗುಲ್ವಾಡೆ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗೈನಕಾಲಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಸಿ ಗೈನಕಾಲಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಚಂದ್ರಪುರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ನೋ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಜಾಗೃತಿ ಮುರ್ಕೆ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅಮರಾವತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಟ್ರಿಮೆಂಡಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಿವೆಂಟಿವ್ ಆಂಕಾಲಜಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ಟ್ರೆಟಿಕ್ ಸೋನೋಗ್ರಫಿ ಮೇಡಮ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಓವರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟು ಯು can we get uh, my please show cv of the uh, good evening everyone uh, it's uh, i would first like to thank uh, vasu sir for having me here and all the seniors pardesi sir uh, meg madam adalvi ma'am uh, pai sir everyone to uh, you know uh, for this amazing uh, uh, session and anupama bhute ma'am so <laughs> ma'am uh, this is pleasure and honor to introduce you uh, she is mbbs dgo dnb ficog uh f i c m c h let us just make it <laughs> so chief consultant obstetrician and gynecologist and minimal access surg- surgeon at nelson hospital nagpur associate professor department of obstetric and gynecology datta mege medical college nagpur director sindhi kolpo private uh, limited nagpur so her work experience is of 20 years and uh, she has lots of awards and recognition on her uh, uh, part maharshi karve stri shikshan sanstha jagruti Atma- let us just skip it ah oh, yes ma'am yes ma'am as you say please ma'am stop we are all waiting for your talk thank you uh, bhumit let me share the screen from my end if you can stop sharing yes ma'am now you can share yeah sure is my screen visible to all yes uh, yes ma'am just yes, uh, yes, ma'am. the full screen yes, yes. so good evening everybody at the onset i thank uh, vasu sir for giving me this opportunity to interact with you all and to present on a topic which is really close to my heart uh, and i pay my gratitude to uh, manda maushi and mandakini meg madam uh pardesi sir and all the seniors present here joshi madam sujata madam i'm extremely honored to present before you um so let us talk i am basically going to talk on the treatment of cervical precancerous lesions using cryotherapy um this aptly fits the you know uh, the target of uh, 2030 that is you know the see and treat approach the co testing and uh, uh the see and treat approach and treating 90% of women by 2030 uh, all the 90% women with cervical lesions by 2030 so basically cryotherapy is nothing but a cold coagulation or uh, and it's a kind of a ablative procedure wherein we can use um the cryo and the cold coagulation both so it's basically for the treatment of cervical ectropion and Uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasias here in particular i will restrict myself to cryotherapy which is a process of destroying unwanted tissue uh, by extreme cold and inducing thermal shock uh, to the cells if the living tissue is frozen to the temperature of minus 20 or low for at least one minute it causes cryonecrosis and a sequence of freeze thaw freeze produces more tissue de- destruction than the single cycle so this is very advantageous pro- uh, procedure and uh, as i said earlier these are the indications cin 1 to 3 and uh, uh, ectropion <coughs> what are the criteria for cryotherapy one obviously that the cin should be confirmed by histopathology a patient should be non pregnant 
there is no other in uh, uh, suggestion that there is a glandular involvement in cytology endocervical cavity canal should be normal or the endocervical cure it should be negative uh, and there should be a correlation between cytology histopathology and the cervicography i'm using cervicography in particular uh, this term because it could be a digital cervicography it also could be a visual inspection of cervix so or any uh, visual inspection which is magnified so uh, this three should be correlated and then only patient should be treated for cervicography because are uh, treated for cryo because there were be, there will be many places wherein uh, you know um, a colposcope would be available uh, so we will have to rely on a visual inspection of cervix after applying acetic acid and lugol cyanide so what are the advantages of cryotherapy it is a opd procedure it is painless it is easy to operate it requires very minimal training it is less time consuming it can be performed even by a primary healthcare provider uh the investment required for the uh, equipment and the maintenance for it is very less uh there are very high success rates complications are pure anesthesia is not required and um, patient can go home on the same day uh, bleeding you know uh, is negligible so the instruments and the equipments which are required as the examination chair a focus a good focus lamp it may be a led it may be a halogen depending upon the setup that we are performing in and depending upon the infrastructure available a bilevial the speculum instrument trolley and a cryotherapy unit which consists of various probes and uh, various other equipments um, this procedure is performed on the outpatient basis and a medical officer i would say the term primary healthcare provider uh, because uh, not always a medical officer will be available so a primary healthcare provider should explain uh, the patient and reassure the patient about the procedure and the details of the procedure whatever will be the outcomes of the procedure should be explained a thorough written informed consent should be taken may uh, patient should be made to lie down on a modified lithotomy position cervix exposed by a bivalve speculum or a cusco speculum all the secretions removed with a normal saline as we do in the uh, in any via vili or a cervicography apply 5% acetic acid and the cervix is ex examined with colposcope or without with naked eye uh look for the type of the lesion the size of the lesion the extent of the lesion how the transformation zone is apply lugol cyanide and nicely delineate the lesion the cry probe surface should be wiped with a good saline uh probe tip is then firmly applied in the center of the tip on the cervical os then set the timer and release the gas trigger of the cry gun note that the pressure is adequate and it should be somewhere around 40 to 60 uh, kg per cm square if excellent contact is achieved between the probe tip and the ectocervix nitrous oxide based cryotherapy will achieve temperature of minus 89 and for co2 the temperature that is achieved is at minus 68 degree celsius at the core of the tissue ice wall the temperature at the edge may be around minus 20 adequate freeze, freezing is achieved when the margin of the ice ball extends 4 to 5 uh, mm past the outer edge of the cryo tip and this will ensure that cryonecrosis occurs down to at least 5 mm of depth and this should be the sufficient cryonecrosis two sequential freeze thaw freeze cycles uh, of 3 5 3 minutes should be done wait for the cryopros to defrost and detach and that is a very important step that we have to keep in mind uh, inspect the cervix for bleeding remove the speculum and advise for the complications and the follow up post treatment uh, advise the patient not to douche not to use any vaginal tampons there shouldn't be any sexual intercourse for at least 6 weeks and 
uh, we can prescribe antibiotics and analgesics. Uh, not always required, but yes, sometimes it should be prescribed. This patient may experience a mild cramping and a clear watery discharge of up to six weeks, and they should be specifically mentioned to the patients. Otherwise, they come that after cryo, our discharge is increased and so on and so forth. So explain them in detail that they need, uh, the, that there will be a cervical discharge, there will be a vaginal discharge. If no problem, the patient is advised to visit for six weeks or three months. Next follow-up should be after one year by cytology uh, and by cervicography. Post-treatment care and follow-up, uh, following post cryotherapy symptoms indicate prompt clinical uh, 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 indicates that the she should, patient should see a doctor immediately. Uh, fever of more than two days, severe abdominal pain, bleeding which is heavier than the heaviest day of menstrual bleeding, uh, bleeding with clots, uh, yellowish or greenish discharge, a foul smelling discharge. What are the limitations of the cryotherapy? It is not useful when the lesion is extending into the endocervical canal. If the lesion occupies more than 75% of the ectocervical areas, and if it extends up to the vaginal wall. Another limitation is that we cannot take a biopsy specimen uh, with a cryotherapy. So that is, I, I believe, a major disadvantage. Many a times, you know, instead of doing a cryo, I convince the patient to go for an ablative procedure of uh, thermocoagulation and, uh, or a leap uh, rather than going for cryo. So what are the adverse effects and complications? Cramping, vaginal discharge, light bleeding or spotting, infection of the sloughing area, cervical stenosis. It can occur, but it is very rare, less than 1% of the patient. These are a few uh, images of the cervix, cervix on visual inspection. After application of normal saline, you can see that uh, there is a lesion on the cervix uh, with the green filter. And then after 5% acetic acid application, we can see the acetamide areas. We can see um, we can see the punctations and other pathologies and see how nicely the area is demarcated after lugol iodine application. And after this, we follow uh, using the probes, depending upon uh, the size of the lesion, the type of the lesion and the extent of the lesion. So this is how the ice ball formation should be there after completion of the procedure. And uh, this is the appearance after one hour. Uh, the, there is still some ice ball formation seen on the cervix. And uh, this is the follow-up patient after one month. After two months, it is the same patient on the ball side in application. And absolutely. Uh, treated lesion. This is a large ectopy, which was again treated using a cryoprobe. This is how it appears after two months of treatment. So uh, I think so that should be all about uh, how uh, a cryo is performed. So the take home message is that it is a bloodless procedure, a play painless and OPD procedure with least complications. It is cheaper as compared to uh, the LEAP or the thermocoagulation. Uh, it should be considered acceptable therapy for CIN 1 to CIN 3 lesions. Uh, I will say it should be rightly acceptable therapy for the CN3 uh, treat approach that WHO highly recommends for elimination of or for working towards the goal of 2030 uh, elimination of cervical cancer. And it is very ideal for small ectocervical lesions where uh, the transformation zone is less than 75%. Thank you all for your patient listening. Thank you so much, Anupama. This is Dr. Kalpana. Uh, Hi, Kalpana. It is, hello. It is indeed a pleasure to listen to you after so many days and uh, recollect old memories of medical college. And you've come a long way since that time. The explanation was very lucid and the videos and photographs were very good. Uh, I uh, invite any questions if they are towards Anupama. If you are taking them now, that is Dr. Sandeep. Uh, 
yes if questions are there we can definitely take it no problem uh, could you see any questions in the chat box uh, can i no. say something this is dr nikhil parvati can i say something sir please Uh, Dr. Anupama, you spoke about uh, biopsies, small place where you think, uh, as per if you say you're doing a C and treat, in that case, you can take a biopsy and also do cryotherapy. So it's, uh, I mean, you will also get your biopsy report and by that time you'll so you have to select the cases, but yes, in small number of cases where you are taking your patients for cryotherapy, you can definitely take a biopsy. I know biopsy will say you'll say it induces bleeding, and that is why the cryotherapy becomes difficult. It becomes ineffective. But in those cases, instead of three five three, if you do five five five, uh, I think you will achieve that depth of uh, uh, you know ice formation. Oh, so fine. that's a little in a few selected cases. That's it. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nikhil, for that. Uh, I just have an extension of this question, if any of the seniors can answer or Anupama can do it. Uh, can, is there any way of ensuring that we're getting an adequate depth of the lateral spread in any way? I think that depends upon the probe, the extent of the lesion, the, and the, 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 the amount of the cryo that we are using. Uh, but I think Dr. Nikhil uh, will be the right person. So in, fact, there are, the, the, in fact, there are different probes available for the different cervixes. So whenever you mm -hmm. are uh, taking your uh, cryo machine, uh, you have different probes. I think there are eight or nine probes in my hospital. So yeah. all the I mean, probe fitting the cervices. So you get it available. So your lateral uh, 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 eyes form it. And the, another thing is, Irrespective of that also, the end point of cryotherapy is that that ice formation should go 5 millimeter beyond the tip of the cryoprobe. So even if you don't have a great uh, cryoprobe or you have a limited number of them, you can ensure that your ice formation can go 5 millimeter, 8 millimeters beyond the tip of the cryoprobe. So that can also ensure uh, a complete process. With the cryotherapy, there is a destruction of uh, maximum 5 mm of the tissue. And that is based for CIN1, CIN2. Yes, yes. With CIN3, for CIN3, we should have think other procedures. Right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Anupama and all the experts. Thank, thank you. you. I, thank you so much. Uh, Vasu, sir, I would like to leave the meeting as I have a meeting with CDSCO. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Yes. Excuse me. Hello. Yeah, yeah, of course. Any procedure now, like even in the uh, uh, your cryo, you have to take the consent of the patient. You have to explain her. It's always better to take the consent. Even you have to take the consent for doing colposcopy also. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Even OPD procedures yes. for that matter, yes. it is now mandatory to take consent for each and everything. Yes. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I think I'll leave since I have a meeting with CDSCO. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, madam. It was a wonderful session. Thank you so much. Coming to the next uh, <clears throat> that is second session of today. That is management of uh, cervical precancerous lesion by thermocoagulation by another, none other than Dr. Bharti Abhankar, madam. <clears throat> For this, I would like to call uh, Dr. Vaishali Data, madam, and Dr. Manjusha Udan, madam, to chair the session. Dr. Vaishali Data, madam, as you know, she is the uh, MBBS and DGO from Latur, and she's, she was the president of uh, Latur OBGYN Society 2022. She is practicing gynecologist since 20 years, director of Sarthak Hospital Latur since 15 years. She has many presentations and awards to her name. And Dr. Manju Shavadan, madam, she is uh, director of Sri Surgical Hospital, Janna, and working as an obstetrician and gynecologist since 24 years with uh, special interest in preventive oncology. Over to you, madam. Uh, good evening, everyone. First of all, 
am i audible yes yes ma'am you are audible good evening everyone first of all thank you dr vasu sir for giving me an opportunity to chair this session it is a great honor for me to introduce dr bharti abhinkar ma'am uh, bharti abhinkar ma'am uh, she is consultant at purva hospital at kolapur since 35 years she has a special interest in colposcopy laparoscopy menopause adolescent gynecology and routine obstetric and gynec she is working for amox since 2009 and she is currently working as a state coordinator amox she worked as a chairperson on the preventive oncology committee and worked as a zonal coordinator amox twice and she is the first person to start menopause clinic in kolapur so she passed so the national much, exam on colposcopy i think we will make it short Okay, 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 ma'am. So, so I request Bharti, ma'am, to start her presentation. Go yeah. to you, ma'am. Uh, am I allowed to share my screen, please? Yes, ma'am. You are allowed only. You can uh, okay. start sharing your screen. Okay. First of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, Dr. Vasu. You are doing really a great job of conducting this digital course. As I said in last. Uh, uh, session also the idea is very novel and you are doing it very nicely thank you dr anagha and dr sandeep who are the coordinators of this and uh, the session is really very informative really brisk and uh, everybody is almost enjoying it i must thank dr rajendra singh for this is sir dr sujata madam and i cannot start my talk without giving respect to dr radhika joshi madam and dr mandakini meg madam so thank you so much and today the topic given to me is thermocoagulation uh, i will just make it a slide show okay. am i audible yes ma'am you are audible yes, last, you are last option ma'am last option this yes this yes. this one yes yeah. okay so we have heard about cryotherapy and we all know that these are the basic methods of treating cyn1 and cyn2 lesion i won't say cyn3 lesions because i don't advise these ablative treatment for the patients of cyn3 we all know and we all always discuss that cervical cancer is a leading cause of mortality in low and middle income countries and who has released guidelines that facilitate increased screening coverage we all know that 90 70 90 and the goal should be achieved during 2030 and naturally the rate of screening is going to be increased and obviously we are going to detect many many pre malignant lesions and it is our duty to treat these lesions once we diagnose it so screen and treat approach must be followed and here there is the role of ablative modalities cryo unit as we have heard from dr anupama this cannot be used in remote places as primary health centers because there may be shortage of gas cylinders there may not be a facility of refilling the cylinders and using the cylinders all the way again and again so cryo unit becomes little bit difficult to use in a remote places but this thermocoagulation unit is very much easy to carry and it is very user friendly so we can definitely use this in a remote settings also so what is this thermal coagulation this is an alternative ablative treatment or a technique to treat the cyn lesions traditionally this is known as a cold coagulation and the equipment usually used to be called as a sem coagulator to honor the inventor uh, same of this technique but this cold coagulation we know is a misnomer why because usually the temperature that is achieved in thermocoagulation is 100 to 120 degree centigrade whereas in routine cauterization what we use the temperature is 300 degree centigrade so in comparison it is a colder so it is called as a cold coagulation it is not at all ice or nothing uh, like that and this method was introduced in clinical practice by kurt sem 
a person from Germany, Kiel. And this was very widely used in 1970s and 80s. But after that, its usage was a little bit low because there came the uh, other techniques like leap and leaves. But again, now the thermocoagulation is in use. This is the same thermocoagulator. Uh, the instrument is really handy and it is having different uh, displays on it. This is the temperature that is displayed. This is the probe that is used for thermocoagulation and the knob for adjustment of the uh, temperature. So this same coagulator, it's a very lightweight, supportable unit. It runs on electricity. So if the electricity is off, we cannot use this same coagulator. The operation of this coagulator is very simple. It's very convenient. Again, as I showed, the switch on and switch off and temperature adjustment knobs are there. The handheld thermal probe is there, which is connected to the device. And the heating plate is there at the tip of the probe. So this is again a, a SIM coagulator. But nowadays, we are having other uh, modified coagulators, I can say. These are the Liger and the Wizap coagulators. This one is a Wizap coagulator. I'm using it for last two and a half years. And I'm very happy uh, after you started using this. I initially or prior to that, I was using cryotherapy for all my patients. But now almost my cryo unit is lying like that. And I am using this WISAP coagulator. Why? I, I will tell you in short. We will first see what are the basic principle of this thermal coagulation. What happens in thermal coagulation is the intracellular water. It reaches the boiling point and the cells, they are automatically or uh, they are necrosed. And the superficial epithelium, it blisters off after treatment with thermocoagulation and the underlying stroma and the glandular crypts in which we are very much interested because our aim is to reach up to the glandular crypts and cause their destruction. So this thermocoagulation will reach up to the glandular crypts and they are destroyed by desiccation. And this destruction is achieved up to a depth of four to seven millimeter and which is our aim that is the destruction should reach to the crypt and up to the seven millimeters in the stroma. So the, uh, achieve, we will achieve a perfect treatment for these pre-malignant lesions. So what are the advantages of this thermocoagulation? The <clears throat> success rate is equally good to, with the cryosurgery. Unfortunately, very few papers are there uh, to show the success rates because the use of it was not there for last 20 years or 30 years and now again it has started so many papers will come henceforward and uh, the procedure is very quick to perform hardly two minutes are needed but we have seen in cryo we have to uh, freeze for three minutes thaw for five minutes again freeze thaw freeze thaw so it will take almost 20 minutes to complete the cryotherapy this is not the case in thermocoagulation uh, hardly two minutes are needed. The gases are not required. Anesthesia is not required. The cost of maintenance is low. I agree the cost of instrument is a bit higher as compared to the cryo unit, but the maintenance, that is a refill of gases and everything is not there. So maintenance cost is almost zero. It's user friendly and very important. The future fertility is not affected at all with the help of thermocoagulation. But before proceeding for this procedure or using this thermocoagulator or treating any lesion, certain criteria must be fulfilled by that lesion. Obviously, the transformation zone must be fully visible. And for that, it should be either a type 1 or a type 2 transformation zone. It should be very accessible. And the transformation zone must be small enough to be covered by the destructive method probe. But again, here we can... Uh, switch the probe from one point to other point very effectively, which is not the case in cryo probes. The invasive disease must be ruled out before performing thermocoagulation. There should not be any suspicion of glandular tissue and I mean glandular disease, and there should not be any disparity between uh, cytology and colposcopy. There should not be upper or lower genital tract infections and there should not be a pregnancy and if the patient has recently delivered, then we should wait for at least three months postpartum before doing this uh, ablative treatment for that patient. 
So thermal coagulation uh, here, the probe is heated to 100 to 110 degrees centigrade. And for 20 to 45 seconds, we keep the probe on one point so that the intracellular water is boiled and it causes destruction. We can do multiple applications of the probe. So if the transformation zone is very irregular or the lesion is very irregular and uh, it is at two or three places, then we can use the probe, we can touch one lesion, we can shift to other. And in this way, we will treat the complete transformation zone. Our aim of treatment of CN1, CN2 lesion is basically we should treat the transformation zone completely, not only the lesion that we are going to treat, but the entire transformation zone should be treated. That is the basic principle behind treating the scene uh, one or scene two lesions. Uh, rest of the indications, et cetera, we have seen already. Uh, thermal coagulation, although it has not been evaluated, as I said, it is as effective as in cryotherapy in treating all grades of CIN lesions. So what is the procedure of this uh, thermocoagulation? Again, counseling of the woman is very, very important before performing any procedure for that matter. So counsel the woman, tell in short what you are exactly going to say. If you say that Mithulata thoda sa shock dena rahe, so she will be shocked and she will not give a consent to this shock treatment. So you have to counsel the woman in a language that she is comfortable and she can understand what exactly you are going to do with her and why you are going to do it. So before performing, you must counsel, you must take the consent of the patient and again do a colposcopy to re-evaluate the lesion as the criteria, as I had said, that lesion must fulfill all those criteria. It should be ectocervical with type 1 TJ, should not extend in the endocervical canal, should not extend to the vagina, should not uh, extend to more than 75% of the cervix. So if it occupies more than 75%, naturally the switch score is going to be high and the lesion is going to be a high grade lesion. So you have to think again before doing thermocoagulation to these patients. The lesion does not have any features suspicious of cancer. Remove the colposcope once you have confirmed all those things and use a focusing light to expose the cervix very properly. Your vaginal wall should not come in between. The speculum should fit properly and you should be able to see the cervix and the lesion very comfortably. So the anesthesia is also not required. What next you do is moisten the cervix with saline-soaked cotton swabs for good thermal conduction. Apply cold coagulator probe to the transformation zone so that the center of tip is on the external loss. So before that, we have to heat the probe. We have to start the pattern and automatically the heating starts. And when the 100 degrees is reached, it gives a beep. So nowadays it's, it has become very easy. When the beep is reached, you just insert the probe inside, taking proper precautions not to touch the probe to the vaginal walls. And one very important thing is don't forget to shut the door or lock the door because if somebody comes, opens the door, that noise will cause the patient will move and the probe will move and she will get burned. So this is very minor instruction, but must be followed because many times I encounter such things. And that's why I strictly tell I'm doing thermocoagulation. The door should not be opened for 10 minutes now. So maintain the temperature at 100 degrees, insert the probe inside, touch the lesion and your probe should be on the external os. The formation of small bubbles around the probe indicates that the procedure has been started. Keep the probe in contact with transformation zone for 45 seconds. Now, again, these instruments are very friendly. After 45 seconds, it will give you a first beep. Then you, will, you can shift the probe to some other point and start thermocoagulation at that point. Then withdraw after you have completed the procedure and you can see a nice crater. Unfortunately, I'm not able to pose the pictures, <clears throat> but the crater looks same as that of the cryotherapy. If the entire transformation zone is not covered by single application, we can do four to five applications overlapping. Switch off the machine once the applications are complete. Remove the probe carefully while inserting and removing be very careful that the probe should not touch to the 
vaginal walls and <clears throat> sorry remove the speculum very gently ask the patient to lie down for sir, five to ten minutes and then she can get up and you can send her home now after the completion of the procedure the post treatment advice is very very important for the patient tell her that she will have a clear or slightly blood stained watery discharge but this discharge is very very less as compared to that in cryotherapy i have used cryo also and i am using thermo also and i am experiencing that the patients are very happy the discharge is there but it is for at least 5 to 6 days only is not more than that and the amount of watery discharge is also less with the thermocoagulation inform that lady that if she experiences a foul smelling discharge fever severe low abdominal pain uh, then <laughs> vaginal bleeding anything if she experiences then she should immediately report to the hospital and you have to see whether there is any sort of infection if the woman develops any of the above symptoms you have to advise her the treatment depending upon that and regarding the more most commonly asked question is about sexual intercourse so usually the advice what i give is better avoid intercourse for one month or till you get your next period the intercourse should be avoided and if the husband is very reluctant they have to use some sort of condom for intercourse but better for better results for good results ask her to abstain for at least one month give her follow up schedule properly she will come after four days for follow up what you are going to do you are not going to do her pulse speculum examination immediately after four days so before that give her instruction to come for follow up only if the above symptoms develop or she can come for follow up say immediately after one month so this procedure of thermocoagulation as compared to cryo is very safe the disadvantages or the side effects of the procedure are also very less the time required is also less so we can use this uh, procedure for treating the cin1 and cin2 lesions and the commonly encountered lesions like ectropion they are also very well treated with uh, thermocoagulation the only disadvantage is you have to be very careful not touching the vaginal walls so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and thank you for patient listening thank you <laughs> am i audible yes 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 ma'am yes, thank you bharti abhankar ma'am you have explained your topic uh, thoroughly actually cryotherapy and thermocoagulation are the most benign weapons to fight this malignant disease uh, cervical cancer is the most dreadful and common disease nowadays and all these cancer prevention measures are medical boon for us Uh, actually, ma'am, I am using uh, cryotherapy for my patients. But after your uh, lecture, uh, I really want to buy thermocoagulation. <laughs> thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, ma'am, for such a good and informative talk. And uh, thank you, Dr. Vasu sir and Dr. Anugha Divan, ma'am, for uh, giving me the opportunity to chair this session. Thank you. Uh, madam, I have got some queries. Yes. Like uh, two, three points I want to thermocoagulator probe. How you do it? How you? How to do it? I have not understood the question. How you are doing multiple application with with that probe? So it like is the, not sticking uh, to the lesion. It is not sticking. You can just take it from this place and just touch it to the other place. Don't take it out from one place. Just touch it like the cautery we do. We cauterize one area. We touch other area like that. Only we have to touch one lesion and touch other lesion. You have got yes. two patients, patient A and patient B. So if one patient is complete, now you want to do the uh, procedure on the second patient. Okay. So, what is your procedure of sterilization of that thermocoagulator? Acha, you want to know about disinfection. So, these probes are usually immersed, washed clearly, and immersed in a solution, chlorhexide solution, for ten to fifteen minutes at least before performing other procedure. 
and after, uh, remove the pro from the solution, dry it, wipe it off, clean with spirit again, and then you can use. Only cleaning with spirit is not advised. Okay, um, and your uh, opinion about the uh, flat probe and a pointed probe yeah. for thermocoagulation? Yeah, I prefer flat probe. Because the area covered is much more with the flat Madam, probe, and uh, there is no need of changing constantly. Most of the area is covered with the flat probe. Excuse me, madam. Pointed, that, uh, if it is a pointed probe, is used, huh? yes. yes, please, please. Yes. In that case, if the lesion is again uh, uh, is getting inside the cervical yeah. canal, and that time you have to use cases, a think, pointed, yeah. yes, pointed probe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there role are two of probes usually available with this Vizap coagulator. Two sizes of probes are there. And uh, one shield is also there. That shield, if you use along with the probe, it gives a better protection. The vagina is protected much. In the initial phase, I used to use that as a preventive measure. But now I can, with confidence, I can insert the probe. But initially, I used to be very afraid of inserting the probe without that sheet. And that sheath is very nice uh, as a protection. With with that shield, it is very difficult for yeah, to manipulate. Uh, multiple application is very difficult with that shield. I yes, think. yes, yes. Yeah. That machine has no uh, flat probe. No, it is having. There are two probes. One is flat. The sizes are different. Two probes. Two probes are there. Do you routinely prescribe antibiotic or analgesic after the thermocoagulation? Usually, I give antibiotic prior to thermocoagulation because usually the women, they have a lot of vaginitis when they come to us. And uh, CN treat methods, I don't apply in my practice because usually the patients whom I treat, they have been screened by me already. I have screened them by liquid-based cytology. I have done their via. And then only I advise them uh, thermocoagulation. So already I am treating their infection. So after the procedure, usually I don't give antibiotics. If the patient is very anxious, very apprehensive, many patients are there. When you finish the procedure, she will start saying, Madam, put up far dukte. So in those cases, a mild analgesic usually is given. Oral. Yeah, oral. oral, oral. And is it necessary, Madam, to hold the cervix? No, 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 you have to use Cusco speculum. Like a colposcope, you have to use Cusco speculum for that. Okay. That's why patients Excuse should not move when you are doing it. There's mm -hmm. no need to catch the cervix. You can just uh, touch the cervix with that. Madam, madam one question. Yes, yes, madam. Uh, uh, madam, uh, we are not going to treat the lesions inside the canal with nipple probe. We are only treating the lesion. Uh, around the os with the nipple shape probe, na? With the nipple shape also, you can treat the ecto cervical lesions. But what is only preferred ecto, is a flat. Only, yeah. only ecto cervical lesions. Yeah. But the right. ideal criteria for this thermocoagulation is yes. the TZ should be TZ. type 1. That is type the one. Best, yes. yeah. If the, it is T, uh, TZ3, don't go for thermocoagulation. Yeah. Because the criteria <laughs> is if the lesion is extending into the cervical canal, you are not going to do the thermocoagulation for that patient. It will not Even be a for type patient. 2 TZ, we are not going to use it. Na? If the lesion is in the canal, don't go no, for no. it. If the TZ is type 2, but the lesion is outside, you are able to see the lesion clearly. Yes, you can go for it. Or you can try with a nibble probe to treat the endocervical part of it. Pointed probe, I mean. Madam, regarding the type, uh, the time of application of the thermocoagulator probe, you said it should be around 45 seconds. Yeah. Um, what we see at uh, Barshi, they used to apply it for one whole minute. So, is if there if any... You, yeah, if you want to apply it at some other place also, then, then you can shift after 45 seconds. Total duration is one minute. Yes. Okay. But multiple application, if you want to do, then after 45 seconds, you just switch it at some other place and start doing again. After 45 seconds, second beep will come. Okay. okay. That is inbuilt in the machine. Basically. Yeah, that is inbuilt.
any more questions i think madam has elaborated in a such a fantastic way and i think all the queries have been resolved most yeah initially also like uh, vaishali as you say i was very much on uh, cryotherapy cryotherapy but that thermocoagulator person made me to use it. this uh, thermocoagulation so thank you dr fadke anagha and dr vasu thank you for giving me this opportunity and it was very nice to interact with everybody thank you so much thank you thank, thank you, you nikhil hi good evening madam nice to hear that <laughs> nice to hear nice to hear that you have shifted to uh, the thermocoagulation yes. <laughs> yes that was nice yeah i have also shifted to cold coagulation since january <laughs> I think Dr. Fadke is also thinking of buying, or you have already. Yes, yes, yes. But no, no top equipment. It is not necessary. Those who are doing cryo, that doesn't mean that you have to shift to your uh, thermocoagulation. You can keep doing cryo. You can use CO two gas also. A nitrous oxide gas may not be visible. It may not be available for everybody. You can do your cryotherapy with carbon dioxide, especially when you're going in camps, especially you're going in places where you know you'll not have ready-made where CO two is easily available. Yes. So yes. that can also be thought about. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, the first lecture was on cryotherapy, and after that, a banker madam made everything think that we should go ahead with the thermocoagulation. Now I bet. that th- after listening to the third uh, session of dr nikhil parvate everybody would like to go with the surgical method that is leap and dips so i uh, would like to start the third session of today that is management of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia by excisional method by none other than dr nikhil parvate sir and to chair the session dr sonali uh vahanne and dr sham kumar shirsam i would like to call upon those dr sonali vahanne madam she is a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist practicing since 15 years at ahmednagar with a special interest in the preventive oncology and dr sham he is a uh, professor department of obstetric gynecology government medical college and hospital akola and i present he is the president of akola obstetric and gynecological society madam can you take the session forward hello sonali madam yeah uh, yes madam very, you are audible yeah a very good evening to all of you first of all i would like to thank uh, amox oncology committee dr pardeshi sir uh, dr anaga madam then guest of honors all the coordinators speakers chairpersons for giving me this opportunity to be part of this webinar it's my kind privilege to introduce our next eminent speaker dr nikhil parvate sir sir is a senior consultant and gynec oncologist sir is head of robotic surgery services and colposcopy services sir is also co-chair for tumor board committee at aditya birla memorial hospital at chinswad Uh, over to you sir welcome sir for this session nikhil parvate sir yeah thank you thank you madam for that uh, kind introduction thank you vasu sir for inviting me to this particular uh, topic on treating precancer lesions of the cervix thank you pardeshi sir for those kind introduction and kind words it's it's an honor to be here again amongst uh, abhyankar madam uh, I, i don't know uh, whether uh, madam has left or not but uh, it i think uh, vasu sir was has personally invited me he called me two three times actually uh, it, for information all of all of uh, for all of you you have the indian society of colposcopy and cervical pathology which, which is conducting a national conference i think in the first week of uh, uh, may i'm not available I'm, i'm actually i'm out stations from tomorrow so i was a little hesitant to take this but vasu sir insisted so i said i will go ahead and take it. so let me share my experience about uh, leads Uh, uh very nice to interact with dr farke also it's after a long time and i hope he's continuing his process of doing screening by colposcopy i don't know whether he has stopped yes. that or not but i think no, he sir, should yes i'm doing it 
okay it's nice to nice to hear that i think that is also a, a big step ahead in uh, prevention for 2030 can i do my screen uh, uh, the screen share yes sir yes please go ahead okay i'm not getting my friends enter there is one button share screen yeah yeah no, no, i know i'm doing that okay can you see my slides just a second yes sir we can see okay is that fine yes okay now we are talking about large loop excision of transformation zone uh one of the person who introduced this uh, large loop excision of transformation zone dr patrick walker he regularly comes to india uh, during our national colposcopy conferences uh, when i had conducted the national iscp in mumbai at tata he was there and he shared how he started and devised the process of leads unlike cryo and thermocoagulation leads require lot of understanding it requires a lot of skill before you can start or uh, treat anybody by the process of leads and to know that we need to understand this diagram clearly because leads ha has to serve two purposes one is the oncologic purpose of oncologic principle of getting clear margins adequate depth and second purpose in younger women because most of these patients are younger women so in younger women we also have to preserve their fertility in the way that this particular procedure we all know is known for a very high risk of preterm premature deliveries so we should not go in too much at the deep which will cause severe cervical incompetence and at the same time we should not do under treatment also wherein the margins come positive and you subject the patient to repeat leave where the oncologic principle is not followed so these two things have to be understood clearly by subjecting or dealing with a patient with leads so this diagrams explains everything we have to understand that on an average the endocervical canal is about 10 to 18 mm in this entire length with the highest number of glandular crypts and villi coming beyond 5.5 mm from the external loss so that is why the previous speakers who spoke of uh, what are cryo and therma coagulation their depth of endocervical uh, penetration was always between uh, always less than 5 mm and that is why they kept on saying that if there is an endocervical lesion don't do this procedure of cryo and therma coagulation right so we have to understand that from external loss beyond 5.5 uh, mm is where your endocervical uh, 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 the the area start and that is what needs to be taken out secondly when you are doing i'll be talking when i talk about the procedure your width of the that that was the depth so now the width of the your uh, probe okay of your leads probe should cover at least on either side about 6 to 10 mm of the ecto cervix and it should cover the entire transformation zone and you should be going 2 to 3 mm beyond the entire scg so these are the principles for doing leads and believe me it is it has it requires a lot of training because all these business of millimeters of depth and width is done with naked eyes although there is a quite amount of colposcopy guidance the guidance is also done by the acetovite lesion but it requires a lot of in depth understanding so that's what i said about 10 to 20 mm is the end entire endocervical canal and at least 6 mm on either side your uh, your width should come into the entire lead specimen so unless and until these criteria are not followed probably you will never get an oncologic lead specimen 
so what happens i have seen many times even in workshops i have seen there is very superficial uh, you know taking off of the ecto cervix without any idea of going into the endo cervix so i think these measurements understanding these depths and based on this you have that many times all of your colposcopies many people are doing and that's why you have that subject of types of tz tz1 tz2 tz3 why because these depth of the depth as i said 5 mm from the ecto uh, from the ecto cervix you will have the crypt villi of the endocervical glands so unless and until as per the standard if you do not go between 7 to 10 mm of the depth from the ecto cervix you cannot do adequate leads and what happens in practice i'll tell you because uh, i have done one interesting thing of course nowadays i'm not doing colposcopy much uh, but whatever i did i have audited my own lead specimen i'll talk to you in the in at the end this was something which is being taught to all of us that when you are doing treat the entire transformation zone should be out we should be treating transformation zone but there are some few new studies also where they say that because you treat the transformation zone and because that woman is going to get pregnant and suffer probably preterm premature deliveries can you just treat the lesion by doing one pass leads at one uh, one site of the lesion on anterior lip and another pass leads on the another posterior this has also been evaluated although it is not been randomized the way uh, uh, leads within the transformation zone but it is giving good interesting results and probably coming down in the future we may have that situation this which was taught that treat only the transformation zone do the entire leap of the transformation zone will change to do leap of only the lesion okay so this is i have not put those slides because let us get control, there is a good randomized control trial going for that also so we all know what are the indications so cin2 cin3 no doubt is the indication now those not suitable for ablative therapy where the lesion is inside the endocervical canal which is already uh, spoken where you have glandular abnormality so on your pap smear you have an agc or agc us type of a pathology uh, and, and the lesion there is no point doing cryo or thermal coagulation when you do a positive now what is this positive endocervical curettage i'll give you a clinical scenario you have a, a 40 50 year old women and probably not menopausal but then when you do the uh, uh, colposcopy you find the tz is type 3 when you open the lips of the endocervix cervix by a speculum you find a lesion there inside okay so here these are the patients where you take an endocervical curettage as a as a specimen and send it for histopathology another thing where you can also do if this patient has a preceding a test which is either hpv or cytology and if it is hcl or hpv positive then there is no need to even do endocervical you can directly do a leads in there so that serves as a diagnostic value also and maybe therapeutic also so that's one lesion micro invasive disease one a one grade one squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix can be easily treated by leads so one a one lesion of the cervix squamous cell not adeno squamous and not uh, adeno can be easily treated by leads and whenever there is as i said there is a discordant between the bi biopsy report and cytology report that i have discussed these are the patients where you take up for leads so it is not just cin to cin1 is never never undergoes leads that has to be very clear you should not subject a patient of cin1 for leads unless it is cin1 type 3 transformation zone and endocervical curette is positive so that's so that's why leads is not for all just do it there's lot of understanding there is lot of and, and and this is not that it can be done by healthcare worker it cannot be done by general gynecologist it needs to be done by somebody who has trained believe me leads is much more skillful than laparoscopy leads procedure is much much skillful than laparoscopy laparoscopy everybody will do only few can do leads because there is lot of understanding in depth understanding of the pathology in depth understanding of endocervical cells in depth understanding of squamous cells in depth understanding of the depth of the endocervix and the available pro, uh, method to treat now these are the probes which are available for treating now on an average if you see the width of the probe is from 
15 to 25 millimeter. The depth of the probe is somewhere from 10 millimeters to 20 millimeters. So when the when Dr. Patrick Walker himself started treating initial patients of leads, he used to use a 15 millimeter depth probe and do leads. And because of that, most of the women suffered from premature preterm labor. So there is a very good study in NHS UK, the also the British Society of Colposcopy and Cervical Pathology, where they have which is the best loop, whether it is the loop with a depth of 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, or 16 millimeter, which serves both the principles, the oncologic principle also that getting clear margin. And it is not just getting negative margin, your, your margin should be at least three millimeters away from the lesion. So if you have a lesion and if you have done a leads, the, the margin of the lesion and the leads margin should be at least three millimeters. So these are the oncologic principle of leads. So by doing this, oh, they, they compared a lot of uh, uh, colposcopies, strain colposcopies, people trained in leads, doing leads, and they found out that the best leads, which best leads probe is the one which has a depth from between 12 or 14 millimeters, if possible, 10 to 14 will be the best. Because as per the rule, you should be able to remove at least 10 millimeters of depth from the ectoservice. So that is how each probe is designed. And that is how you will have to select which patient, which probe. It cannot be blind one thing for everybody. Okay, because you have to serve two principles. Such a type of lesion, yes, I would say it's a high grade lesion, and definitely uh, you can probably it can be a micro invasion because of the type of the vessels you see on the surface. So these are the lesions where you very easily do a leads, and definitely it will serve the purpose of both diagnosis and therapy. So this is a very good indication for a patient who wants to undergo leads. So this is how the process goes. In one pass, the loop it, the loop is made of a tungsten wire. It is very thin. If, if at all during the process, anytime you mess up doing the process, the wire gets broken, the cervix gets stoned, and this has happened in even workshops, and it becomes difficult to control the bleeding. That's why I said this procedure is much more skillful than laparoscopy. So the wire has to go in one, one pass, the entire specimen with the required depth, that is 7 to 10 millimeters, and required width, that is between 15 to 20 millimeters, has to come out so that you can get an adequate sample the way it is shown below. That's the adequate sample. Every, every of these surgical procedures, will, this definitely has uh, issues if not done properly. And that's why you require training. You just cannot give the leads to anyone. At least I don't do that. I am only doing colposcopy guided leads in my hospital i'm not doing anything else i'm neither doing i've stopped doing colposcopies i've stopped doing cryotherapy because i don't get time from my oncology work so the only thing because i found it even when when i've trained people to do leads it, it doesn't work properly because that feel is something different and many times it happens that they are trying to do it and the tungsten wire breaks and the cervix bleeds, and you will not be able to take the depth of the cervix also so there is definitely bleeding uh I haven't seen probably one or two patients are the one where I had bleeding and I had to take a stitch. Otherwise, everything is very well controlled by ballpoint pottery. Uh, important thing is cervical stenosis. I have had few patients with cervical stenosis. This were all, of course, it did not matter much to me because they were in the peripenopausal age group. So in those patients, having a stenosis was not, not that significant versus those who are young and who are probably planning for a pregnancy. Uh, that is one of the issues. But overall, if done in a in a correct way, if done in a proper technique, definitely we have not seen complications. What is written, what I have only written four to nine percent is general complication. I don't think so. If it is done in a correct hands, you will have complications for less than even one percent. So that training is very very essential for doing a leads. Uh, in this video, I'll show you one of my leads procedure. So you can see on the posterior lips and the anterior lips. I move it from right to left and not from left to right because otherwise your hand will come in front. You use your normal cautery, whatever is available in the, uh, the you use the popular and the monopolar cautery, uh, the, the coag the, the setting.
usually use for our surgery. See this, it has to be done in the one pass. See this, it has to be done in one pass. And this is the absolute cutting current. I'm not using coagulating current. I'm using the cutting current. You have a smoke evacuator. You have to ensure that your uh, suction is working well. Otherwise, it will be different, difficult to you know, evacuate the smoke. Gently take out the specimen. You will have some bleeding down, which you see. You can just put in a ballpoint pottery and clear off all the bleeding. Now, this patient was perimenopausal. Actually, I wanted to do a cone biopsy or something like a tracheectomy. So, I achieved the same depth by doing a top of the hat leads. So, what is top of the hat leads is in next setting, I will put the leads from below down. You saw it, it's moving from one side to other side. Now it will go from below top. And after you remove that part of the cervix, you the, the feel which you get is like a top of a hat. Now I'm removing this part also because I went to the depth of almost 13 to 14 millimeters from the ectocervix because there was a glandular, there, there was a lesion within the endocervical canal also. So the leads has gone up. So this is this this is what is top of the hat procedure of leads. Okay, so you have removed this. And now you can see the cervix, it is actually looking like a top of a cricketer's hat. And that is why feel. So those who are not trained to do tracheectomy and you're dealing with lesions, this is another way of uh, treating even 1A, 1CA cervix. This is as good as tracheectomy. Of course, the lateral, the site which we require is not taken in this, but this is still an adequate procedure for someone who is not trained in tracheectomy. I'm not talking about radical tracheectomy. I'm talking about only tracheectomy. So this top of the hat excision leads can replace tracheectomy. Simple tracheotomy. And that's the entire uh, look of the cervix that you get at the end. No bleeding. So that's what I said. If it is done in a correct way, you will not see any bleeding anywhere. Now I'll tell you one thing. I've audited my uh, own results of lead specimen. That in around, I think it was 45 specimens of leads, how much depth I have achieved. How much were the negative margins that I have achieved and what was the width? So what I found that the average size of the loop electrode, which I have used is the one which is 12 millimeters. With that, I have got a depth of around nine to 11, 11 millimeters. In two patients with CIN3, they, the margins was positive for 1A1 for a micro invasion. Okay, so there was CIN3 in the center and there was micro-invasion laterally. So this patient went, uh, we did, uh, we went ahead and did a, a simple hysterectomy because it was 1A1. And secondly, what I understand is out of these, there were about 18 or 19 patients who were young. And of these 18 and 19 patients, all of them became pregnant. I generally ask them to undergo IUI if they are talking of pregnancy so that they become pregnant fast. And out of this, nine of them had preterm premature delivery around 28 to 32 weeks in spite of taking those, uh, uh, what do you do that? Os tightening at uh, whatever, 14 weeks of the obstetrician did. So all these patients were clearly told that they require os tightening. But in spite of those, eight, out of those 18, 19, nine of them underwent preterm premature delivery. So from that time, when I am starting to do, do leads, I have started from, I mean, I have come down from 14 millimeter probe to 10 sometimes in young and around 12 in peripenopausal and menopausal age group. And if I feel that there is something inside also, then I do the top of the height excision immediately. So that is why it is very important that all of you who are practicing colposcopy and leads audit your leads because as i said leads is requires lot of understanding it is not one for all it is not by everybody it is not for everybody 
you need to audit it and then understand that probably what is the right probe I can select, what is the right depth, and how I can not miss the crypts in the endocervical canal. That would be my message. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the excellent talk. And leads is more skillful than laparoscopy is the take-home message, I think, yes. for today. And uh, we all need to learn leads at your place, sir. Please arrange some workshop there and we will be delighted to uh, take the course under you, sir. No, no, I think you all are doing you all are doing dedicated work. I am not now dedicated enough to do colposcopy and leads. But oncological but principles, like yes. I was, I was I was present there with sir in Pune. One, one case we have done. Yeah, Dr. Vasu sir has come once and we have done one leads cases. So that is what it is. I think uh, understanding of uh, depth, the way your glandular clips will I are uh, seeing it with your seeing your lesion, seeing the depth of the lesion. And that there, there are times it had happened initially when I started. I thought that this could be cryotherapy. I did a cryotherapy patient comes back after nine months, and you find one more lesion there, and the lesion is going inside. So this is means that I had missed it in my initial uh, treatment with cryo and everything. So you know, you require very correct assessment. What is happening is we should not jump to treating the patient. We need to do a very thorough assessment. And most of the time, what I see is whenever, even in workshops also, they just show doing the ectocervix. How an endocervical lesion is seen, what effort you need to make, especially in women about 35. How, what effort do you make to see the endocervical canal? In fact, it should be a routine that all women about 35 who's undergoing colposcopy, their endosur after application of acetic acid, you are supposed to put in the endocervical speculum and see the endocervix. Believe me, once you start doing that, you will find that all these years I have missed everything in endosurgery. Yes. yes. And yes. that is where that difference in your treatment comes. And that is how then probably you will be resorting to more correct method of treatment. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We have given your precious time to us. Explain a very difficult topic in simple manner. Thank you. Any question, Dr. Parge? Yes, sir has elaborated in such a wonderful way that I have taken home message was only leads is more skillful than laparoscopy. You have to follow all the oncological principles. Leap is not a simple procedure, and you have to keep in mind all the things that is depth, particularly, and especially the endocervical canal. Which we always, I think, uh, while doing the leap or leads, you have to remember all these things. No, there are Excellent. some hard lessons. Yeah, there are some hard lessons I've learned myself only because uh, they, there were two patients who taught me what actually I was doing that I was doing may should be changed. These two were, I think, around 33 and 37 year old patients, and uh, it was a high grade lesion. So we did a, a leads, and uh, post leads, both these patients had positive margins. One of them was positive for CN3 and another was positive for, as I said, micro-invasion. So I just went back and we have all the video recording our leads in our digital call post. So I, went, I thought that I have not, I've not done anything wrong. Then I checked my probe. Now, sometimes it happens that, you know, you just uh, ask your junior doctor, Baba, put this probe and, you know, give me the probe. And I realized that the probes which I used were wrong. And that is why I got... Uh, so. What I'm trying to say is then when you're doing leads, first think of the oncologic principle. And I have done in a woman with, who's 30 years old with uh, CIN3, I said, I am not going to care what is happening about her baby. I need to get because if she becomes CA1A1 or 1A2, she goes away straight for you know additional therapy. So in that woman, I have done a proper leads. Okay, the margins were negative, but the the, the problem was I went to the depth of 15 millimeters. Okay. Till today, that woman had three miscarriages. I spoke to a few of them. There are 
few methods of circlages you do what i don't know some abdominal circlage and all those things she has worked finally thing has happened she has adopted but i am happy because the oncologic principle was met in her my distance the the lesion and my uh, margin was just 2 mm okay. the margin of the leads and the margin of the lesion were just 2 mm so i to make that uh, in fact she was, she she's a, a dermatologist she's coming for follow up with me but i had to make her understand that if the margin would have come positive obviously you would have been subjected to another lease as it is you would have got you know you would have had the issues with preterm premature deliveries so at some point of the time you know maybe it may be harsh for that woman but then i've taken but she's fine there is no issue in a follow up over all these years but then that was a harsh decision, a decision which was taken for a th- she was 30 year old at that time and she had to adopt so i mean i mean as an oncologist when i am supposed to do a procedure the first thing that comes to my mind is oncologic principle what is the oncologic principle if while preserving the oncologic principle i am able to preserve the fertility and give the child definitely we will do it if not we will definitely not do it we cannot compromise on oncological principles when we are treating the pre malignant yes. condition right sir dr sandeep we have done uh, such a case in colposcopy there was no dense acetoid area yes yes hp was strongly positive very strongly positive then we have done biopsy that was the cin3 and uh, pap smear also high grade lesion that patient we uh, i have done with a uh, nikhil parodesa yes uh, otherwise that uh, patient can miss the uh, colposcopy there was no dense acetoid area the margin was free now after one year we will do hpv test of that patient i was pre- i was personally present there with sir sir lucky yes. it was a nice case yes i think anaga madam can conclude now very nice uh, presentation nikhil sir mm, uh, sir uh, all this leads procedure has to be done strictly under low magnification na huh? are this there, there is see what is strict is your oncologic principle whether okay. i don't know your what what may be what magnification may be good for my eyes may not be good for your eyes so okay. don't see uh, there is nothing called low or high the okay. magnification should be good enough Adequate. to see to see Enterism. immature no to see immature squamous cells to see mature squamous cells to see yes. the proper endocervical cells and in a lesion your magnification should be good enough to see whether there are punctations whether there are mosaics okay so anything it may be 2x 3x 10x whatever x it may be where you can pick those lesions up that is what you are comfortable so you may be uh, may be comfortable with just a minimum 2x i require 10x so there is nothing called strict magnification magnification is not at all a criteria in treatment of any or in the entire process of colposcopy okay to conclude the session on behalf of amox oncology committee i am extremely grateful to dr pardeshi sir dr dalvi madam dr joshi madam dr mandakini meek madam for sparing the time from their busy schedule for this webinar i am extremely thankful to all respected speakers who have enlightened us on their respective topics and also i am thankful to corona remedies for arranging this wonderful program thanks a lot everybody thank you thank you thank you thank you all the best good night thank you good night bye bye on behalf of uh, the team corona remedies i would like to thank all the respected faculty members for providing us uh, such a good uh, event and uh, we would definitely like to work uh, on such uh, informative sessions in upcoming future too soon so thank you very much uh, have a good sleep good night good evening sir Yeah okay. thank, thank you. you bye bye thank you good night bye thank you sir